breaking barriers and bridging the gaps between patients and doctors. Welcome to Brainstorming with the Docs and your co-hosts, Dr. Glenn Harrison and Dr. Colby Condos. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorming with the Docs. I'm Dr. Colby Condos, my counterpart, Dr. Glenn Harrison. Say hello, buddy. Hello, everyone, and hi, Dr. Colby. Hey, man. So today we are going to be breaking down another case. This is something that we've actually got quite a bit of positive feedback on, and it seems like it has been helpful to some of our listeners and viewers, so we're going to do that again. Uh, This is actually going to be one of my more complex cases that we're going to be going over today. If this is your first time watching or listening to the channel and you have questions about your own health or other aspects of your health care that you have questions on, make sure you turn on the notifications, hit like and subscribe and pay attention to upcoming content because we are going to continue to break down common aspects of health and health care in the upcoming episodes. Uh, So without further ado, this is going to be my case, which is a, a female patient in her mid to late 50s who came in after she had been to a lot of different providers with some really unique and uh, I don't, like unexplainable symptoms. So she came in and she was suffering from frequent bouts of vertigo where if she got overwhelmed at any time, she was actually getting so dizzy that she was fearful that she would pass out. If there was any change in environment and it was really noisy, she would feel like she's going to pass out. And she was having a lot of irregularities in her blood pressure and also with her digestion. So, so after, she, oh, go ahead. Sorry for interrupting. So, so she came in, what was her, her, her primary concerns, her, her major concerns? You said vertigo? So yeah, her main, her, main, uh, her main issues or her main concerns when she came in for her visit was she was suffering from chronic bouts of vertigo mm-hmm. and it wasn't positional vertigo. It was all the time. She was, she could be in Target, she could be in Walmart, she could be in the grocery store, she could be at a concert with friends and dizzy, unexplainably. So that was concern number one. Number two was her blood pressure had been fluctuating pretty significantly. Prior to some things that had happened in her life, her blood pressure had always been really, really stable. And she, so dizziness, blood pressure, And then she was having issues with like cold hands, cold feet. And then also she had dropped a dramatic amount of weight, um, like unsafe amounts of weight initially. I think she said she lost, it's been a while since I reviewed her case. Um, This one's a couple of years old, but it it was like in the upwards of like, I want to say between 30 and 60 pounds in a very, very short period of time. And it wasn't really, it wasn't through changing diet and exercise. It was just, she just lost it. They were, she was really concerned. So those were her, her top concerns. Dizziness, alterations in blood pressure, issues with perfusion or blood flow to her hands and her feet, and extreme weight loss. Um, so to start out, she came in with these concerns. I did a full comprehensive neurological breakdown with the cranial nerve exam, peripheral nerve exam, you know, cerebellar exams with balance coordination, all this kind of stuff. We did on it, checking her autonomics where we would do blood pressure when she was laying on her back, blood pressure when she was sitting, and then blood pressure when she was standing. And then we checked like heart rate variability between these, these different positions. And we found that she had had, she had really, really significant fluctuations within her blood pressure and her heart rate when we changed her position. Um, her balance was awful. Her coordination was awful. We found that her bowel movements were very, very irregular, and she often alternated between, you know, diarrhea and constipation. Energy levels were really, really poor. And after going back through her history and trying to figure out where all of this, you know, all of her signs and symptoms started, it had started after she had been on a particular medication, which we're just not going to name. Uh, but she went on a particular medication and it had caused all of these negative, con- negative consequences almost immediately after. Um, was it an antibiotic or a steroid? Yeah, it, it, was, it was a pretty significant antibiotic. Um, and actually they did both. So uh, it could have been one or the other, but I, I, after like being in practice for a while, I'm more inclined to think that it was, uh, was the antibiotic that, that did it. Um, but that's speculation. So th- that's just my, my most educated guess. So 
after after doing this, we really dove into, and we ordered a lot of blood panels. So we ordered, you know, a, a comprehensive metabolic panel. We ordered a CBC, and we started working with her, and she got better, but she wasn't actually getting like the lasting results that we were looking for. And we'd been working with her for like you know once or twice a week for about four weeks, and it just wasn't improving as quickly as we as I I wanted it to, and as quickly as she wanted it to. Um, and really, when we talked about what her goals were for the long term. You know, she just wanted to be able to travel. Like she was a big traveler. Her and her husband were big into going to concerts. They wanted to be able to go to like Lake Havasu. They wanted to be able to go to, you know, Northern Minnesota or so, wherever they want to go to go to small uh, like bars and restaurants and, and yes. support local artists. So that was kind of like their thing. And she was worried that she was going to be unable to do this because she honestly couldn't like do anything. She couldn't walk to the bathroom without getting dizzy. Um, so yeah, it was pretty substantial. Uh, after doing the exam, after doing the blood work and stuff like that, we did find some irregularities in the blood work that we wanted to address where her cholesterol was kind of all over the place. Her blood sugar was all over the place. We found that she had what we call dysautonomia. So her autonomic nervous system wasn't stable, I guess is a good way of putting it. It was jumping all over the place. She wasn't perfusing blood to her head. So she wasn't actually able to, to, to change her ejection fraction and, and change her, her blood pressure to force enough blood to her head when she changed positions. So whenever she would stand up, she'd get lightheaded, dizzy. Um, so yeah, dysautonomia is what we ended up uh, finding that she had. And after we started working on stabilizing her autonomics, she got a lot better. The problem was, is like whenever she would go on, like go on, undergo stressful periods. So they were having you know, family members from out of town that were coming to stay at their house. It would get worse again. Um, so, and her so when you talk about she, she couldn't handle stimulation, including emotional stimulation. Yeah, yeah. Light stimulation, sound stimulation, emotional yeah. stimulation, any sort of stress. You know, you look at stress can be physical, it can be emotional, it can be environmental. You know, it, it, all those different types of stress put her over. So there was one instance when she walked into, I can't remember the store she was in, but there was like the stimulus of walking past the clothing racks gave her a vertiginous episode. Um, there was a episode where she was at a rest restaurant and the table next to her, there was a birthday party and they clapped their hands to sing to him. Vertiginous episode where she thought she was going to faint or pass out. So it was really negatively impacting her, her quality of life. She wasn't able to do anything. She wasn't able to leave her house. And after about, I want to say, six or eight weeks, we'd gotten her to the point where she could like start to go into, into restaurants and go into, you know, grocery stores or going to, you know, other stores, Target, Walmart, wherever. And she was able to do it, but she still had low, low, low levels of energy. It was still really fluctuating. So we, we ended up going with a more comprehensive metabolic panel and a food sensitivity panel because I had a strong suspicion that she was actually like cross reactive with certain foods in her diet that were actually cross-reactive with her cerebellar tissue. So her balance was actually really, really poor as a result of molecular mimicry, which we have talked about in other uh, previous episodes of the podcast. So if you guys have questions on, you know, autoimmunity or food reactivity and stuff like that, go back and listen to those. But after running the panel, we found that she was reactive with a bunch of different types of proteins um, from the foods that she was commonly consuming and once we pulled those foods out and we coupled that with the neurological rehabilitative exercises that we had given her, she got dramatically better within like the next three weeks. And the positive part of this story is this patient went from unable to leave her house to after working with us for, I think it was probably like six months on a fairly regular basis and implementing all of these changes into her life. She was actually able to hop on a plane and fly to Lake Havasu for two months uh, with her husband and her friends to go to a bunch of concerts and to, you know, go out on the lake and stuff like that. So there definitely is options as long as you look, know where to look, and you are willing to put the legwork in to make the changes in your life. So if this is happening to you, you should probably, probably look into it. <laughs> Well, that's pretty awesome. That's exciting. Considering everything she went through and, and, and how long was she dealing with this before she connected with you? Pr prior to d coming into me, she'd been dealing with it for like eight, I think it was 10 months. It was either eight or 10 months. So it was like almost right around a year almost that she'd wow. been dealing with it where she was unable. She had just retired. 
Um, and she wasn't able to do anything. You know, she was excited. She was looking forward to the next chapter in her life. This is what I'm going to do. You know, she had big plans and aspirations and dreams. And I mean, to go from feeling super vibrant to having this positive out- outlook on, on your life. And then all of a sudden you can't leave your house. You can't see your loved ones. You can't do the things you enjoy, like walking with your kids or your husband or whatever. And you're not even able to enjoy the quality time with your loved ones that, like you were expecting to. Pretty and traumatic. Exactly. And something as harmless as just taking a medication that was prescribed for whatever the ailment to cr- turn into this, this snowball uh, effect that where your life is completely changed. Yeah. And I think that she, she's a very smart patient, very smart individual. And she had done everything that she could think of to try to get it better. But it was putting all the pieces, the individual pieces of the puzzle together to, mm-hmm. to make things really linear for her. And, and so it was explainable. You know, she was like, yes, I thought that I maybe had some food sensitivities, but I didn't know how, how to do that. You know what I mean? I'd noticed that if I ate certain things, it made my digestion poor. But no one, no one had offered me an alternative to how to test that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then the cascade of, of issues that turned into other things. Yeah, exactly. So, so so once the immune system was tripped and dysautonomia happened, it's like, how do we untangle this? And that's, that's, that's where you, where you were. Yes. And that's, and that's what I really explained to her. I was like, look, if we, this was not going to get better unless we actively work at it. And, and if you continue to eat the foods that are triggering your immune system, it'll probably never get better. Mm-hmm. So and it was a totally point. invaluable tool for her to be able to physically look at something and go, okay, I have immunoglobulins to these foods. Like mm-hmm. my immune system is most definitely reacting to this. And those foods weren't a problem prior until her immune system was, was triggered and yeah. irritated. The, the, the autoimmunity was tripped. And then now these, now there were foods that were adding to the irritation. Yeah. So, yep. so, so now she has to live a little bit of a different life to maintain her life that she had before. Right. But at least she can, she has an option now. And I mean, I haven't seen her. I, I communicate with her probably like once or twice, maybe three times a year. I have not seen her at all since the start of this year. Well, um, she must be doing good. No yeah. Well, good. And, and she touches base with me and mostly what she, when she does it, it's like, you know, Hey, you know, so-and-so has this, is this something you think you can help with? By the way, doing great. Thanks again. Yeah. Type of deal. She's out there just kicking butt, doing whatever she wants, living her best life, which is, is, is why we get into this, right? Because we want to help people. And yeah. she was great. She was a great patient. She, we found what she needed to do. I told her, this is how we're going to do it. And then she did it. So <laughs> I think that that's been a common theme over the last couple of these for us is like, you, you hold a lot of the power for you to get better. You just yeah. have to find someone who can help you lay things out in a linear fashion that is able to figure out what's actually going on with you and then put the steps in place and, and run with it. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, the doctor can only point you in the right direction. You have to pull the trigger and go that way. Absolutely. So, well, that, that's awesome. There's another person. There you go, life buddy. Change for life. Yeah. So if this is your first time uh, listening and you, got, and you are suffering from dysautonomia or you have your own you know, healthcare concern or, or complaint that no one's been able to help you with, reach out to someone who specializes in functional medicine, functional neurology, or even someone who has a different, you know, different designation that looks through, at things through a different set of lenses because it's not always unexplainable. It might just need a little bit more investigation. Um, and if you have other questions or comments or concerns, you guys can get a hold of us at info at brainstormingwiththedocs.com. You can get on our websites, our websites are www.northlakeschiropractic.com or www.drgharrison.com. And again, turn on, uh, turn on notifications. So when new content rolls out, you guys get that as it comes out and you can stay yeah. as current as the rest of us on this information. And we're always throwing new stuff out there. That's we're it. Every there. week we'll roll out something new. So mm-hmm. if you want us to roll out something specific, let us know. <laughs> That's right. We'd be more than happy to touch on it or get somebody else to touch on it, like your there wife. You go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have to, oh, man, don't even bring it up. I'm still a little <laughs> sensitive about that. <laughs> I'm going to be right, replaced, Dr. I'm telling you. 
<laughs> yeah. All right, Dr. Goldie. That was awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us. And, um, and we'll have, yeah, we'll have all our information in the links below so you can access it. Sounds good, buddy. Well, we'll come up with something for next week. Oh, we will. All right. All right. Till next Talk time. Talk soon, bud.